Hello, and thank you for joining us for the 46th episode of That Show with Billy Wilson. Tonight, we have a lot of great food people with us, in, uh, including Babette Papai, who Hello. runs Bakespace.com. And we also have J. Ray Chip, who is a photographer Hi. who has a new book to show us. And we also have food blogger Lexi Croft. Hello. And we also have... Google Plus and YouTube video marketer Ronnie Bincer joining us. Greetings. And we also have chef and lifestyle blogger Serena Bland of uh, TrinityGourmet.com. And we also have our special musical guest, Shani, or Shani, 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 Shani. There you go. <laughs> that right. You got it. Shani. Um, we'll be playing a few songs for us for the last 16 minutes of the hour, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And we also have entrepreneur Tom Rolfson, who's joining us from a club that he is helping out with. And we also have our co-host, Tibby. Come on, Tibby. Yeah, he, yeah, he's the hardest one to work with. He is our furry co-host, oh, wow. Mr. Tibby. That's a lion. 20, he is. He is 20, enormous. 21-pound cat. Wow. <laughs> he's the real mind behind the entire show. I love My that goodness. he's an inspiration for your for your new show. Have you started that show yet with the animals? Yes, uh, we, we did one uh, episode uh, on Saturday, and Tibby was a part of it, a big part of it. A big part, no pun there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ronnie, I, I believe that uh, you wanted to talk a bit about uh, how Hangouts on Air can be used for food bloggers? You bet, sure. Um, many of you out there might know me as the Hangout Helper because I try to help people use this great tool we got called Hangouts. And um, I've been focusing more and more on food. Uh, food is very, very popular amongst the Hangout crowd because it's such a neat visual thing. And so when people are showing how to make something or how to prepare things, it's just a natural that you'd want to be involved in it if you are a food person and you can use Hangouts. So you can have your own TV show, basically. So I have been interacting and helping different communities on Google Plus that deal with food and food blogging and Hangouts with food. And I also ran into one of the other guests here, Babette, and she and I, or she's invited me to speak at something in Austin, coming right up alongside the South by Southwest uh, deal going on in about, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks from now. Uh, the first or the the tenth of March 2013 is when we're going to be doing this show and I was going to share my screen just for a second on her website it's called Tech Munch and let me show that right up here so Tech Munch this is the main page techmunchtx.com and this is cool for me I'm going to click where it says speakers and I get to be one of the guys right there in the lineup so this is going to be kind of fun for me I used to live in Austin, and uh, it's nice to go back there. So I'm going to get to see some old friends, as well as um, entertain and enjoy my time at the South by Southwest area alongside the real activities going on up there. And I'm Very hoping nice. also to interview some people. I'm planning on doing some live hangout on airs throughout that whole week of the interactive portion of South by Southwest. So that should be fun. Cool. Ronnie, will you be able to tell us where to eat in Austin? <laughs> you know, I've been gone for a while, but I do know where some really nice Tex-Mex foods are. When I lived there, I was a big yeah. fan of Tex-Mex. I didn't realize that I was missing it as much until I left. And then I've tried Mexican food everywhere else, and it's not the same. It's not. Well, have you tried Mexican food in Los Angeles? <laughs> that was what I was going to say. I haven't, or if I have, it's been long enough. I tried, actually, I moved to Mexico for six months of my life, and I was, it, it was not the same. <laughs> so I like Tex Mex, I guess, rather than Mexican pure. Um, I've tried it all over the country because I used to travel. I used to train people on computer pro programs and travel all over the country. So I've eaten in a lot of places, but I tended to only like it in Austin. But maybe, but bad if I visit you out there in LA, you can show me around. Definitely, except I'm going to take you to vegan places. <laughs> so you may be very sorely disappointed. Uh, it might be. <laughs> carne asada is one of my favorites, and so that's uh, carne is meat. And yeah, if, if they would have that at a vegetarian or a vegan place, it would be like 
carne asada. Yes, <laughs> like the on chicken. It. <laughs> carne tofu asada. <laughs> Oh. Where where yeah. are you guys? Where Billy? Where are you uh, I, hanging out from? I'm middle of nowhere in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada, which is a isolated, tiny little. Well, it's not that tiny, but there's like just moose trees <coughs> and rocks around here. And that's Sounds nice. Hey. Yeah, What's funny really is you said there. moose trees. I thought somehow that was a type of a tree. <laughs> yeah. Moose. No, just moose and trees. And Timmy wants another appearance. He's just going nuts on the floor there, just ripping at my <laughs> shirt. And there's the man. Wait, what's my the dog story is going crazy to? too. Oh, is that a dog? Yeah, he's going nuts too. This is Kimber. Aww. Yeah, he's hungry. He wants me to feed him. I'm gonna see if I can get my <laughs> dog to come out here. Maybe your dog sees Tibby and wants to get over to the other little thumbnail thing. No, actually, my dog likes cats. He's not a cat chaser. Tibby's no, no, kind of like a dog chaser. Yeah, I was going to say, he'd probably run away from Tibby. <laughs> Tibby would eat a dog, probably. <laughs> and a moose. Yeah, probably. Because he is the big man. I'm trying to get my dog. He's now thinking I want to play catch with him or something. So I'm like, come here, come closer. And he keeps like going really close, but like out of arm's reach. <laughs> I'm like, you bastard. <laughs> So where, where's everyone else from? Well, I'm in Trinidad, <laughs> live and direct. Oh, wow. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I'm We're from L.A. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm in... in... Sorry. Oh, I, I was going to say, I'm in San Diego, so pretty close. And I'm in Colorado. And I'm just okay. up the road from Ronnie in Wyoming. What about Tom? Cool. I'm just outside Milwaukee in Club in Racine, Wisconsin. I decided to bring my dog. What do you guys think? Nice. <laughs> he's my he's my rescue. He's my Aww. I saw him on Facebook on a post and someone was like, We're putting him down today. Somebody rescue him. I was like, uh okay, I'll do it. But he's he's great. And look at this is GPS. Aww. Wow. <laughs> I know it's ridiculous, but it's if he ever gets lost, at least I know I'll find him. Yeah. Cool. How much does a GPS collar like that cost? Do you know? Uh, it was. Uh, I got a deal. Uh, I don't know if it's a really a deal deal, but it was like 150 bucks, and uh, it includes a year subscription as well. So uh, we there was a story where um, there was a dog running down our street and our street was very it's very busy and so I, we tried to catch this dog he's like a seven pound little chihuahua little like rat terrier mix and um, couldn't find him and then long story short a couple of posts on Facebook a couple of shares we found the owner because somebody spotted the dog it was a one-eyed dog very cute um, in a construction site and they were like oh my gosh I've seen this dog so I realized I'm like the power of social media is great but had this owner known for like seven hours while he was looking around his neighborhood that the dog was already like two miles away, it would have been a little bit better for him, I think, and the dog would have been found um, uh, earlier. So at that point, I was like, okay, if this dog goes missing, I'm, I'm a goner. Like, I just, Aww. I'll stop work. I'll stop everything <laughs> until yeah. I find him. So I'm like, you know what? Make the investment. Just do it. And so I, now I can actually follow him with like a little, there's like a little map, and you can follow him with a little ball, and it goes everywhere he goes. So... As long as if I know where he's at, I won't feel so pressured to, like, you know, not next, know what direction to go in. Next thing you need to do is stick a camera on him so he can be part of the hangout and show you from the dog's viewpoint of where he's going. <laughs> yeah, I think someone did that with a cat. I think Tibby would like that. <laughs> a collar, collar cam? A GoPro? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> so have, you guys, have any of you guys been on this uh, chat before with, with Billy? I've, it's my first time. Yeah, first Ron's time. Yep. I've watched it a bunch, but first time as a guest. That's mm -hmm. very cool. I like the um, Billy. Why did you start uh, your chats? Why did I start them? Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of interesting people on Google Plus, and um, people like cats, like Tibby, who's going around me in circles <laughs> right now, and uh, <laughs> I just wanted to bring people together and. Uh, 
it helped them show things, you know, like their photography, the, what they do, their art, their music, because there's a lot of people who want to see cool stuff like that, and Google Plus has a lot of great talented people and people who know a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of great things that you can put together on here, and so, and it's been a lot of fun too, uh, meeting a lot of people and organizing this and putting all these people together. And it, it's also quite fascinating that although I live in a city that's isolated, I am able to see people that do all different kinds of things from around the world, and I can get them into a hangout, and we can all be here and talk and like show our own things and do and do that kind of stuff. And it's quite amazing. I agree, and I, I was actually thinking about what you just said and with Ron, what Ronnie said. Um, being here in Trinidad, um, I love to hear about food blogger conferences, things like Tech Munch and all of that, and I don't get to attend any of it. And so one of the assets of Google Plus has been being able to meet other food bloggers in formats like this, having a weekly HOA like I do, um, so I can share my work and, and see what other people in turn are doing without actually having to buy plane tickets and get visas and all that other extraneous rigmarole. So I, I really do enjoy the technology and the opportunity. Serena, what time is it where you're at? Um, it's 11, 11 p.m. That's, That's not, not too bad. Too bad. That's like, it's not uh, too bad. I'm an hour ahead right now of Eastern. No. So there's probably some food blogging things that are actually showing with a hangout. So you could, you know, some conferences that might have a, occasional sessions that are showing in hangouts. Have you ever attended that way? Um. Not yet. I mean, this is really my third month on G+, so I'm still learning my way around. But um, I'm definitely seeing the food blogging community moving here almost like an exodus because, you know, as word spreads about this technology and, and the communities that we have around our niches, like Babette's vegan, um, you know, I do Caribbean, but I also eat a lot of vegan. I cater a lot to gluten-free as well, um, adherence. So it's a really good way for us to find each other out and find collaborations as well, to build some really innovative collaborations that um, just being bloggers, um, sometimes those connections don't happen. But on G+, I find it gets facilitated a lot easier. Cool. You said a mass exodus. Where are they coming from? <laughs> well, you know, that blue platform. <laughs> it's okay. okay. <laughs> the other, other blue place. platform, yeah, that other hey. place. <laughs> the interesting thing about Facebook is that this week they actually disabled my account because I shared a Google shortened link in a private chat message. Are you serious? Yeah, wow. they, they actually disabled my, my account because they, they, they thought I was like, and then they, they, they said that my computer is infected with a virus and I have to download something from Microsoft to remove malware. Yeah, I, I I heard about that before. Oh my gosh. Like Google like a Google link being determined as suspicious or something. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's time to. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't, Ronnie, um, or anyone who kind of knows a lot about this. I've been using Friends Plus Me because Chef John suggested looking into it, and it's been great because I can anything I post on Google Plus, it automatically feeds to LinkedIn, Facebook, and um, the other one. Uh, well, that's cool. And, and Twitter. Twitter. So, and I don't really Twitter. I don't have the time being a mom, you know. I just, and I really don't Facebook much. So it's been a, a godsend because I don't have to ever go see those platforms. I can just, <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, do, has anyone experienced anything, or are there any drawbacks to using Friends Plus Me? You well, know I would I wouldn't say necessarily friends plus me or anything else, but the things that do the automatic posting generally, yeah. there can be drawbacks because it looks like you're just dumping and you're moving on and you're not actually interacting in that place, and so that sometimes, at least definitely in Google Plus, if people just dump links here and they don't interact with people, then people tend to not even really pay attention after a while. Or start like saying hate messages <laughs> and stuff and <laughs> Or they block you or they mute you and... Uh, yeah, so that's... Was, especially the ones that like mass post and, and like notify you of everything. Like I've Email. had some people, it's like... <laughs> I've even had so bad, like, every five seconds I have a new post from this one guy, and then I have to, like, mute these people, because it's like, new post, new post, new post, new post, new post. <laughs> and then, like, overnight I wake up, and there's, like, 250 emails from one single guy. 
It's, I had somebody insane. like that two weeks ago, and the strange thing is that their posts were these one-line status updates. So it wasn't even like they were plugging their stuff. They were sending out like 200 posts of, I'm here, what's up? <laughs> How what? are you? What's new? And I'm like, I don't know this person. I don't have them circled, anything. So I think what goes on with that, and I'm not sure if it's still an issue, but it used to be that um, whenever someone, whenever, like, if I added Billy to my circles and then he added me back, it would come up with a message like, Billy Wilson added you back, send him a message, and mm -hmm. the default would be to send it to everyone in your circle and then to notify them. And I don't know if that's still an issue or not. Oh, but wow. Be, that used to be the default setting. So, yeah, I hope they fix that. But That sounds terrible. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> that that would explain why I wake up every morning with a hundred messages that say, "Hi, so and so, thank you for adding me." Yeah, it, yeah, that's probably what's going on. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's changed. Uh, that's unfortunate, but I think that is still the the status quo. And for <laughs> people that don't don't know to uncheck that box, right? Um, yeah, they just do it without even realizing they're sending you an alert. You know, I had a thing where I had I had posted something, and then somebody commented on a post, and then when other people comment on that post too, everyone on the list before gets that email update if they have it set. And I had one person who was like, "Why do you keep sending me messages?" And I'm like, "Who is this person?" And I went to her, <laughs> prof her profile, and I'm like, "I'm not even following you. I don't even know how this happened." And then I realized she had commented. And then it just kind of went and went and went. So I said, oh, you should check your settings for your notifications, and that's probably where that will stop. Um, I find that just crazy. <laughs> they definitely yeah. default to more notification than less. <laughs> I guess for people that are new, it makes them feel like they get more going on, but Could be they figure really it really annoying you... if you have, I don't know, over 5,000 followers. Yeah, I guess they think once you've been here and you have that many followers, you know where to go change your settings. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I'm still learning things, too. I, yeah. Me, too. <laughs> I get those weird emails and comments all the time. So. so, Lexi, that's what I would say might be the biggest risk is when you do automatic posting to other places that people might not like it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I well, the whole Facebook thing, I've given up on. I, mean, I just have to stay there. It's kind of like a necessary evil. Uh, I have to have a presence there, and it doesn't actually. It, Friends Plus Me does make it a very nice, clean-looking post, and even on Twitter, you can click on the Twitter link, whatever, and it shows a whole image. It, it's pretty slick, but I just don't know if it what people have thought of it or their. You could always ask them, right? I mean, you just go on manually on the Facebook and say, hey, "I've been doing this for a little while. What do you guys think?" and see what they say. Yeah. It is social, right? Right. You know, there's, uh, I think it was Annie Leibovitz once said, uh, like, the best camera to have is the one that's in your pocket, the one that, like, that you have on you. So I think with social media, if you find that using something like that helps you be more efficient, then do it. Um, the only thing that, that drives me crazy is um, when somebody posts to Twitter and it posts then to Facebook, but it has all the hashtags that you mm -hmm. don't, you wouldn't use in <laughs> Facebook, so it's obvious that it came from Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. the only time it, it looks weird uh, when I see a hashtag and I'm like, this doesn't work on this platform. Um, but, uh, you know, just be conscientious of that. So I would say for Twitter and Facebook, sometimes it's good to kind of keep the two separate because you can add more text or utilize hashtags better. I think also, if you're going to, because I do that sometimes, I sometimes post links to other places because I just don't have time to post everywhere, but I kind of switch it up a little bit. Um, usually I post to Google Plus straight out because people on Google Plus don't like it when you post a link to somewhere. So people know if they follow me here that if I post a link to somewhere, it's either something that Google's terms of service doesn't allow me to post directly, and so I'm abiding by that rule, or it's I also, um, I'm a journalist, so sometimes I have something that gets published somewhere else, so I'll post a link. But um, if I go to Facebook and I, you know, post a link to something, I just kind of switch it up. Maybe sometimes instead of posting a link there, I'll actually post real content, and then people don't think I'm absent. They just think I'm really busy. So... <laughs> Do you guys, what, what, made, what made you guys start doing the Hangouts, like for your own shows? 
Well, I know for me, um, I'm a perfectionist, and the process of editing footage and going through footage and editing was like a migraine. <laughs> and so the idea, so when I found out I could just do live to broadcast, and then at the same, same time it's live and recorded, and I have to just kind of step away and be like, it was what it was, that was actually a godsend, because all that stress, all that paranoia, you know, I just had to let it go and just go in, cook, talk, engage and walk off and, and I love it because I've I just finished my seventh episode of my HOA series which is Caribbean Cooking with Serena Sweet Han and um, it's really been amazing I've met great Google Plusers I've engaged with more people even in my local artistic community and um, I, I definitely would recommend it yeah what what is your format as far as how you do it do you guide someone while they cook or do you cook or what do you, how do you do it well, I actually, um, I alternate, so two to three episodes a month I'm cooking, and then first Thursday in the month I have a guest cook who I'm walking them through one of my recipes, and then the last Thursday of the month I have a guest cook who's showing me one of their recipes. So <laughs> two Thursdays around that a month I get to kick back and either help somebody learn a recipe, a Caribbean recipe, or I get to learn a new Caribbean recipe from a master. <laughs> and mm. then the other episodes I'm cooking. And I always have a musical guest as well. So hopefully, you know, you get a little bit of entertainment and um, some new exposure to some new artists. So does your musical guests have a standalone time or are they playing background music or how do you do No, that? no, no. No, they get their standalone time because my my whole thing was that there's always dead spaces in a recipe and even though I cook two to three recipes you know there's still going to be dead space or time when I'm blending something and <laughs> so you know yeah so rather than just looking at me blend give that three minutes to a new artist an up and coming artist and you know sing your heart out do you do <laughs> and um, you know I just go and mute and do what I have to do fantastic so, yeah. I saw some episodes a long time ago you know Larry Fenillier Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he actually encouraged me to come over to to Google Plus. So cool. He did one uh, with some folks in California where they had someone who wasn't in the kitchen in California, but just in a different room serenading. You know, just sort of background music with oh, the guitar okay. while the cooking was going on and while everybody hmm. was talking. He was sort of there with some background music. I thought that was pretty cool, and it was a different location. Yeah. And again, that's what I love is that I can just have all these people from around the world. You know, I have, I had a show where it's like me cooking and an artist in England, or me cooking and somebody's in Chicago, and my other artist is somewhere in Trinidad, and it's like, wow, you know, we could not coordinate this otherwise. Very cool. I find when I when I was first started doing the Hangouts, the biggest hurdle was getting people to log in. <laughs> 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 it was like. Which browser, which plugin for chat, and then and then you finally start to get like originally we had um, we were gonna do we have four co-hosts, which seems crazy at first, but it's like the best thing decision I ever made because when one or two people can't make it, I'm not on my own. I'm not just me, uh, which can be really difficult. Uh, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like I we at first we tried to bring like four or five guests and just if they didn't understand the platform in the beginning it was so I mean it was like a second job getting everyone up to speed um, and so now we just have one guest <laughs> I figure I can handle one person each week having to walk them through the process right um, some people do practice hangouts in other words if you're gonna do your show on Friday you might have a practice hangout with your guests on a Tuesday yeah to I do a that. couple days to deal yeah, with it we do that then, too yeah well, I like to do that. I like to actually put them not on air, but I go through the process as if it is on air so they remember to check that little box. Because mm -hmm. I found before if I didn't do that, they would go into this vicious cycle of not checking the box and being A lot like, of people do I? that. That box is small. They need to put like a red border <laughs> around that box and around that whole, yeah. For those out there who have no idea what we're talking about, when there's a hangout on air, you have to agree to the terms of being recorded and broadcast, and there's a little legal thing where you have to check the box. So that's, I think, the box you guys yep. are talking about. Right? Yeah. I've actually never had a problem with people not checking the box or not figuring out how to get into the hangout. Everyone I've ever invited to the hangout always has gone into the hangout, whether I've had a practice hangout with them beforehand or not, which is kind of interesting. Even if I've had a practice hangout, I've never had somebody not be able to get in yet. Yet. 
Probably no, next Billy week are... it will be my first time. Yeah, don't jinx yourself, Billy. <laughs> Billy, are most of your guests, do you find them through Google Plus? Um, or on YouTube. I, so, and there are a few off of Flickr, so I think they tend to be more technologically literate, but I mean, I, I sometimes like contact people um, on Google Plus who've never posted, but if you actually send them a message on Google Plus, they'll actually respond. So I, I've gotten some guests like that, so they have a pretty well no idea what Google Plus <laughs> can be used for, but they, most people tend to have a, a from what I've seen, they, they're able to get in. I've never had anyone say, oh, that, I didn't see the box, it just wouldn't let me in. I've, I haven't had that yet. <laughs> but I can see it happening now. It mm. makes me wonder if I, I if I should like prepare that like before the, my my show is and all that like I should say you know like point that out they have to check it. Well, you do a great job, and you send I think the potential guests you send them a list of these are the things to expect and what to prepare yeah. and that kind of thing. So I think mm -hmm. that's helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I try. I, I have a lot of stuff I now put out to you guys for the show, and it's, it keeps growing too. Gets I'm longer and longer. Yes. That that, that nobody will be able to say to me, oh, I didn't understand what the heck to do. Unless hey, I just that, didn't read it. Oh. Go ahead. That, that, I would love to learn about Bake Space. Can you tell um, us about it? Me too. Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, in 2006, I was a television director. And um, I took a cake decorating class uh, to feed my soul and bring me back from the dark side. And I decided that I wanted to pursue food. I d was tired of television. I was working on a reality show where I had to get one mother to tell another mother that she was the worst mother in the world. Oh and, my goodness. Um, I, was, I realized at that point I was like, I think I hit rock bottom. I think this is it. I'm going to hell. Um, <laughs> so, and then of course I took a cake decorating class and, you know, if you know people in food, food people are kind, warm, giving, helpful, compassionate, wonderful, interesting, artistic. And so I was like, oh, I love these people. These are the exact opposite of what I'm, I'm used to. Uh, so, and then I, you know, in 2006, you'd go online and you'd see forums and you'd see MySpace. And I didn't understand MySpace because it was so crazy. And it had no real utility, you know, like it was just, for mu musicians it did, but for everyone else, it was just like you'd put up a profile and you would just get spammed by a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so then I registered Bakespace.com and we launched, let's see, I had read in the New York Times that Martha Stewart was going to, um, sorry this is a little bit of a long story, but Martha Stewart was going to launch her community and like in television you always have people who are going to launch something before you. So I had this little motiva motivation and I was like, Martha Stewart's going to launch, I'm going to beat her. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you think in your head. Um, and so we uh, we launched. It took us about four weeks to develop the site, totally the opposite of what most people do. Uh, usually people spend months and years developing stuff and making it right and making it pretty. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know. So I just put something up and was like, that's it, we're going. And um, Several years later, we've been back-to-back -back Webby nominations for Best Social Network. Um, the format of the site is a recipe swap so that people can create an online kitchen and share recipes with their friends and family. And then just recently, we launched a cookbook publishing platform. So we have a free tool that, you can, that anyone can use uh, that they can create a digital copy of a cookbook, both as an e-book that stays it's web-based and also a native iPad app that lives within our community of cookbook apps. So... The idea is that together we all rise with the tide, and when one author sends their friends into the app, they're looking for recipes, they may discover other cookbooks that they may like too, and since the app becomes a reader, people can, you know, find r cool recipes and really sort of one-of-the-kind cookbooks. So that's called Cookbook Cafe. It's in the iTunes store. Um, and I, all that I can suggest is if you ever have an idea to build something, just do it. Just do it. Don't do not look online of how you do it because you will out <laughs> outthink yourself every single time, and you will talk yourself out of it. So just do do it, and if it looks terrible and bad, your 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 customers and your your members will tell you. <laughs> well, then you're the person to ask about e, e cookbooks and how they're being received and the future of them because a lot of in my little circle, my little tribe of blogging friends. We just haven't seen ebooks succeed um, for, well, I haven't done one yet, but they haven't. Um, but 
how are people receiving ebooks, e cookbooks? I think when when the cookbook authors take it seriously as it's a real item, just as much as the hardcover cookbooks and actually put marketing into those books, they yeah. will do really well. Like they're doing pretty well on our platform now. But I think the difference is that a hardcover cookbook allows an, a chef, a blogger, an author to um, to be on the Today Show because they're a cookbook author. There's something there that is tangible. It's coming out. It's being put on the shelves. Um, it's very hard to say, oh, we launched our ebook. Can I get on the morning show? <laughs> so mm -hmm. it just has that kind of. It's not. It's not that it's bad. It just doesn't have that kind of. Um, you don't have that marketing behind you. You don't have that big publisher. Um, so I think once authors start to say, okay, I can launch an ebook faster that I can maybe use it in the interim. If I have a cookbook coming out in two years, why don't I produce a few smaller books and get my fan base up and use it as a way to say, you like this, my cookbook's coming out and use it as a marketing tool. Um, that's probably the best way to use an ebook. Okay. Uh, or something that's like, I've always wanted to do a cookbook on tea recipes. It's like, am I ever going to get a publisher to produce that? Probably not. Maybe. <laughs> you know? Okay. Good. That's know, helpful to me. <laughs> I know that for me as well, because I do have an, an ebook. Um, if you take a long term approach to it, that also helps because a lot of the times people think of the launch and a lot of the marketing material is all about the launch. But if you take a long, evergreen um, look at it because hopefully your your book would be you know relevant month after month. Then if you can, as Babette says, develop your fan base, develop an email list. I found an email list is as important, if not more important, than blog visitors because those are transient. Um, you really want to capture them. And um, if you just you know keep engaging and you keep relating, you answer questions. Um, people will come back and they'll buy and they'll tell their friends and they'll they'll help you spread the word about what you're doing. Sounds a little like music. <laughs> it's very similar. Yeah. Have a CD and yeah, you can't book. just put out the CD and be like, buy it and walk off. No, exactly. You, you keep gigging, you keep playing, you make connections, and ebooks are the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I think with hardcover, I'm, and I wonder if music, it's the same way. When you have a publisher that says, "I'm validating your idea." Here, here's an editor. They're going to walk you through the process. You almost feel like you already won. You already have the publishing contract. You're already there. So to get you through that process of putting that book out, you already feel like a winner. When you're do producing it on your own, you're like, "Hello, everyone. Anybody there?" <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's you kind of like, like you that. You still have to win. Yeah. It's it's similar to music too, except the you know the publishers take some of the ownership of the songs so you always have to kind of figure out I don't know how how it is in books and how uh, how much the publisher owns or or controls what what happens to it but uh, you know it's 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 sort of the the um, uh, you know the two-sided uh, situation where one side you can be independent and do whatever you want and kind of make your own decisions and then if you're bound to something you're always bound to the terms, you know, so it's, uh, it depends what you prefer, but uh, each one has its benefits, I guess. Well, on that note, I guess I can start talking about my book. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm, put, I'm releasing a book, um, it's about lighting for portrait photographers, um, and I'm not going to show the actual pages because then people won't buy it, but um, I'm gonna release the e release the ebook first. Um, basically, uh, some of the people listening to this might be familiar with some of the names of the models that are going to be in it. So I'll say their names in case they're interested. There's gonna be Caitlin Roberts, um, who's the model I shot in Linda Vista Hospital, and um, Courtney Cipriani, Kaylee Castro, Allison Warren. Angela Newsom and uh, Christina S. Hill. And there's also going to be some self-portraits um, that I did for Selfie Sunday, which is Jeff Smith's project here on Google+. Plus. So um, those are special to me because I didn't take self-portraits before I joined Google+. Plus. So I said I would include some in my book. Um, but uh, the first chapter is going to be about um, white balance for photographers because I think um, 
I included it because it's really important for lighting to make sure that you have a good white balance. So um, there's some other technical stuff like why you want to shoot RAW versus JPEG, um, which I often sometimes joke about how you know, well, this is just the JPEG. I don't put, but no, it's important. It's really important to shoot RAW. Um, and there's also a, a piece about shooting with fluorescent lights. Sometimes you get this weird green or yellow hue, and then talk about how to fix that with white balance settings on your camera. Um, <clears throat> and then there's um, another chapter on how to light for specific poses that models might have. Um, and by models, I use the term to mean whoever the subject is. It could be a musician, it could be just a portrait of your mom, or it could be anything. But um, basically just concerns with lighting and how it falls on people's faces or um, different dimensions if they're, you know, if you're shooting to make them look taller or shorter. Um, and then I post some schematics about, like, if you're using one light or two lights, and um, I go into what each light is used for and what each light is called because there's, like, you can use a, a ton of different lights on a photo shoot. Um, most professional portrait photographers I know use at least six. Um, so I kind of anticipate when I write about using one light that some of them might think I'm writing as a joke, but I'm not. Like, you can actually do that if you want to. Um, I go into flash versus continuous light um, and why you don't want to use the pop-up flash that comes with your camera for professional photo shoots. It's just not, it's not good for the photo. Um, and then there's also different, like with continuous lights, there's so many different types. There's colored lights like you could use on a stage for a drama or a play, um, indoor fashion shows. Um, I use them for pinup photography, um, shoots with, with girls for pinup, because I think they give it more of an aged look. Um, and then I go obviously into natural light, you know, with the sun, uh, different times of day and why certain times of day are bad and why certain times of day are good. And then the last little bit is about composites and how to make sure the lighting in a composite photo, which is a photo that's um, used, you use software to put several photos together to make one photograph. Um, so it's, it's kind of like a graphic design thing. But there's you know, it's really obvious if you have a, a shot of somebody and the left side of their face is shaded, but then the sun's on that side, that it's um, a composite. So I go into some different things on how to make those work out. Um, so this is going to be my first book that I'm going to release. Uh, kind of excited. I'm also kind of kind of anxious about it. It's been delayed because of because of work obligations. Um, let me see if I can screen share some of the photos in it. Obviously, I'm not going to show all of them, but uh, some of the shots in case people are interested. Let's see if it just on my screen. So, so is that, except for that one chapter where you talk about montage or collage, um, do you talk at all about software like Photoshop or other things like that? Um. I try not to get into how to use software because it's more about lighting, but you, like, I probably will say um, I haven't exactly gone into the very last little bit of the book. Is it'll be on up for pre-order. Um, actually, here's the name of my website right here. Um, and so there'll be a big link that says pre-order the book, and so people can go to there and pre-order it. It's $10. Um, but uh, I probably won't go as far into that as um, as maybe some people are expecting me to. Um, I'm kind of known among the photographers as someone who doesn't really use Photoshop that often. And mostly it's because I do use lighting tricks and different things like that. Um, so the reason, kind of the prompt behind it was to discuss the lighting. But there are certain things that you use Photoshop for. Um, so I, I probably will include a little bit about that. I did for the pinup photography. You can't just use a pinup that looks like it's from the 50s straight out of the camera. You have to use software. So. Hey, is, it, is anyone else hearing her audio a little chunky? Yeah, yeah. Jay Ray, if you turn, yeah. off your screen, turn off your screen share, we can hear you better. Yeah, it's probably just... Okay. 
So I just have a quick another question. I used to teach people how to use Photoshop. That was part of what oh, I did. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I actually have a. Yeah, that happens to me sometimes. A, a weird Ron, question. Ronnie, were you? Did you go to like all the Mac? Yeah, I was. You yeah, were. Was, oh, was I'm kind in one of your sessions. Yeah. I knew you looked familiar. Hi, it's me again. Um, yeah. um, but the question is, um, and I used to talk about this because a lot of times I'd get photographers okay. in, in these Photoshop classes and I ask them, you know, is this okay? I mean, are photographers, I know it's going to vary from person to person, but do they right. hate Photoshop because of what other people are doing with photos that they might not do with the um, camera? Or how do you think they feel I, about it? I, I think. I agree, know, I agree. I think it's different. Um, I think that. It depends on what you're shooting and who you're shooting it for. Like, for example, with my portraits, which is what the book's about, um, I can take, since it's for, for mostly for me and for the model, I can take a little bit more liberties with it to use Photoshop. Um, but if I'm shooting for certain magazines that won't accept stuff like that, it's not like retouching on the face, then obviously I can't. Um, I do also work as a photojournalist, so in that sense, no. No Photoshop at all. Um, I think we can use color correction and dodging and burning, but it's still like looked down upon. So, um, so it's more I of guess, a purist, purist world, world in that perspective. Yeah, and the reason behind that is just because um, Photoshop can be used to remove things or um, change the way things look, and that kind of ruins the journalism behind the photo. So it's kind of like the news wants to make sure that everyone knows that they're not lying to them about it. So. I guess that's the rationale behind that. Mm -hmm. but, um, but here, let me see if I can screen share the photos really quick. I'm sure people are probably interested in seeing them. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy, what's your take on Photoshop and photography? Um, well, one of the things that I think is that I think some people... Oh, I'll click on the J Ray so that she can show up. But, um, some people don't like the thought of being lied to, and some people uh, feel like they've been deceived from some photos looking like they're something when they actually aren't, because, you know, everyone's seen a photo that kind of, like, claimed to be something that what didn't really exist, but the thing is that a lot of people just use it in a creative way to, like, express themselves, like, in the same way that someone would draw a scene, or someone would paint something, or sculpt something, uh, someone could make something similar in Photoshop. So I, I think there's just negative connotation some people have towards Photoshop because they don't want to be deceived when they take something to be true. And they, of course they expect you know things to be true when it comes from the press and that kind of stuff and from like you know mm -hmm. credible sources. Well I love Photoshop and it's probably because Ronnie <laughs> taught me everything I know. <laughs> That's so kind. <laughs> and Jay, uh, you want to show your photos? We, we have about two more minutes until the musical guest. Uh, can you see them? No, actually what we're seeing is a tiny little corner of Shani's uh, background. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why it looks familiar. I don't yeah. know why it's not showing them. <laughs> At least that's what I think that um, is. It, it definitely yes. is. Yes, you I'm seeing her hair as well. Trivia Maybe question. if you... Uh, Screen share and then unscreen share, and then you know, like if you cycle through it, it might do something. Let's see if it'll let me pull them up in Picasso Viewer. Maybe Google's own program will work for, for Google here. Can you guys see that? Not yet. You try screen sharing again because you're not screen sharing at this moment now. Yeah, yeah, you guys see that? Yes. there we go. There. That's a shot of Kaylee Castro. I do go into high key versus low key. A lot of people don't think I shoot high key, but proof proof, it's a, a high key picture. Um, this is her again in my studio, showing a lighting setup. Um, this is uh, one of the shots from Krista Ray's scavenger hunt. A Google Plus thing here. Um, that's a a selfie. Uh, Oh man, that's little. This is, uh, I love that. That is awesome. Thanks. This is uh, Caitlin Roberts. She's one of my favorite models I've shot with. It's from uh, the Linda Vista Hospital up in East LA. Um, this one's from Egypt. This is a belly dancer performing on stage. Um, and a pinup shoot. 
Uh, this is Caitlin again. So there's just a little preview of some of the photos that will be, will be included in the book. Um, just, you know, keep people's interest. But people can start ordering, uh, pre-order the book tonight even. I have it up on my store and it should be done probably even by Tuesday and available for for me to start emailing them. So obviously I won't be shipping. So anyone out there who's listening, if it charges you shipping on my store, let me know because that would be a mistake and I'll have to refund you the shipping fees because it's an ebook, so it shouldn't be needed to be shipped. Um, Do you think it would it would benefit a food blogger who does, you know, still life photography? Um yeah, I mean, I go into lighting stuff, so if you wanted to substitute the, you know, a person for an item, you could yeah. probably do that. Um, you would be especially interested probably in the section about continuous lighting, because I don't think, I mean, based, I don't really shoot a lot of, of food, but based on from what I've, I've observed and seen for myself, I, I think people would probably use continuous lights more than they would use strobe. For yeah. that, but um, there definitely is a significant portion about lighting with continuous. So, yeah. and spoke time get to our musical guest, so she has some time to play. So, uh, Shani, right? Yes, yes. Shani. You got it. I, I kept on pronouncing it wrong all this time, and I'm like, oh wait, it's Shani. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I know. And Shani, um, you do sound like you're in studio mode, so it sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. Well, it was really cool uh, listening to all of you talk about food, and now I'm really hungry, but uh, I'll play a couple songs for you. Um, this is one that uh, I think Billy put on the, web, uh, on the, the Hangout. Um, the music video of this song was on YouTube, and uh, it's called I Am. I just released my album um, about a month and a half ago, and really excited to finally get it out there, kind of like you guys' books, and um, this first one's called I Am, so you guys can hear the piano as well? Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yes. All right. Pocket of sunshine where the curses of the clouds can reach my skin. And it's okay that my clothes are a perfect shade of black, cause it's easiest for warmth to creep on in. I learned that living life must be in color. I laugh and run all out and run to mice. It's okay if I forget to try too hard sometimes In fact, a simple black and white is just enough I am unbreakable Unshakable I am Two feet on solid ground I am alive I am On a happiness so strangely, I wonder why you're never satisfied. You're too critical yourself. This robot you do well. Just take a smile and tell yourself at least you try. Now I've gained an appetite for silence of a piece that I felt many do mistrust. I stripped away the nonsense of a cruel, cowardly world And all that's left is me, the trees, the sky, the dust I am unbreakable, unshakable I am two feet on solid ground I will I I am Unshakable, unshakable. 
hand Two feet on solid ground, I'm alive I am unbreakable Unshakable I am Two feet on solid ground, I'm alive I am I'm alive, I am. I'm alive, I am. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, I'm gonna just keep going and okay. uh, get a couple more in. <clears throat> the album is called Merry Ground, so this next song is the actual song that's called Merry Ground, and um, it's about um, basically when you, sometimes this happens in your life when you feel like you're um, stuck on a vicious cycle, in a vicious cycle of doing something you might not want to do, and being somebody you might not want to be, and you feel like you're stuck on a merry ground and you can't can't get off of it because it keeps going around and around and around in the same way. Um, so it's kind of a song I wrote a, a while ago as a sort of wake-up call um, saying, you know, it, it's, it's, it's okay and you can get off the merry ground and change your life and, and direct it in the way that you want to. So uh, here's merry ground. I took a trip to the playground today Drops of pain splatter carelessly And I stood and tried To find the youth in me And for a single finite moment I stayed Nothing else but a pair of brushes in my hand I paid thousand words for me It's a merry go round And it's got your bell So wake up darling Cause it's bolted to the ground Oh it's bolted to the ground it's bolted to the ground Among the jungle gym These kids, they don't try to find excuses for why Life's not what they choose So I wish I could do it right My visions lead me out of sight I'm hiding in this color by number It's me
old head to the ground. It's old head to the ground. It's hard to clap fast enough, you know, to make it sound like. <laughs> I know. I learned. I learned that at the, my first, um, my first uh, Google Plus show when I finished, and everyone was kind of. It looked like everyone was staring at me. I was like, "Did I do it right? Was that okay?" So I'm gonna we switch need, over. <laughs> we need to load up these sounds so we can do this thing. You know, get, get the applause. There you. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. Um, I'm going to switch over to the guitar, so I'm going to mute myself for one mm. second. Someone also said uh, it, on the page for the chat that it sounds like you're in voice mode, though, not studio. But I don't know what we can do uh, with that. I think she may be stuck. Yeah. Hey, Billy, I want to show you something you may enjoy. Okay. It's my, um, this one's it's my 17-pound cat. cat. Can you see her body? She's cat. very heavy. Yes, I see <laughs> Kitty. This is my great All right. Oh, I'm, I'm back. Have to okay. ask Google what the problem is with the not being able to switch studio mode because I just tried to look to see if I could switch and it says that I can't, so I don't know what that's all about. But Where's my pick? All right, you guys keep talking. I'm going to find my pick. La, 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 la. <laughs> so um, I'm looking forward to being... With your deal, Babette, in Austin, it's going to be awesome. Austin. Awesome. I was, Austin. I was just thinking that um, last night for Valentine's Day, my boyfriend got me a violin, and I have no musical ability at all, but I've always wanted to play, so this is very inspiring for me. I know, I know I'll never be this good, but I can dream. <laughs> you can bring it to Austin and join in Austin City Limits. That would, could you imagine? You know what I want to do is I want to do a video. I want to do like a montage of me, like every couple of days I want to show me do, trying to do the same song and then I'm going to cut it together and then show somebody within a year nice. doing it. All right, I'm back. Um, cool. This is a song called Perfect Sky. Do I, do I only, how are we doing on time? Uh, we have enough time for one more. One more, okay. Mm -hmm. You want a slow one or a fast one? Or... Kind of, you know, slow or moderately fast. <laughs> How about fast? Fast, okay. Sounds good. Uh, it's called Enough. And um, it's, it's on the album that you guys, if, you, if you're interested to check it out, it's called Merry Go Round. And uh, it's on iTunes, it's on Amazon, it's on uh, s the other places that you can get online music. Um, and you just type in Merry Go Round with my name, Shani, S H A N I. And you can check that out. Um, so this one should uplift everyone. It's a it's a one that uh, is about being uh, enough for not thinking you're not good enough for something. So it's kind of a encouraging song. I was hoping you'd hold out a hand for mine. You wouldn't let me fall. You wouldn't let me fall. I am tougher than those who never try at all. There's no need for perfect pieces in a puzzle we can't stop. I would rather. Pour it in the love around with ease I'm Trying to be where I am now So help me, please We are all somebody that needs somebody I got it hard to prove you in some time But I am enough, I am enough We are all in a fight, the war of our lives I Don't let this hear you say you're not enough Cause you are enough, you are enough I 
story And I grew a heart of hearts And they complete Don't let them fool you words Tear you apart Noisy fights They try to make you think You can't go on But you'll go on You'll go on You'll go on You're all awesome, somebody to need somebody Got it tired to fool you words sometimes But I have enough I am a nerd. We're all in a fight, the war of our lives. But don't let them scare you. So you're not enough, 'cause you are enough. You are enough. Oh, think you know? Ready? Somebody to need somebody And got it tired to prove You would sometimes But I am enough I am enough We are all in a fight The war of our lives But don't let them scare you Say you're not enough Cause you are enough You are enough We are all somebody to need somebody And got it tired to prove We are all somebody we need somebody 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 and got a tire to prove you with sometimes but I am enough I am a This thing fell out in the middle of that one. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounded great. Thank you guys so much for having me. It was great having you. And yeah, it was great having you and listening to you. Beautiful <laughs> voice. Well, thank you. Yeah. Jay Ray has one last thing yeah. to say before we end. Yeah, I, I feel bad. I was so rushed. I just I wanted to make sure I didn't forget to mention that uh, Rachel Alexandra did an excellent job designing the cover of my book. So I just wanted to announce that publicly so everyone knew how awesome she was. So she's a good friend of mine and Billy's. Yep. <laughs> so. And I'd like to thank all of you guys for joining tonight and for all the viewers for watching. And next week we'll be back again. We, I have a some really interesting actresses on next week and no, cool. uh, it's going to be a, a, a really fun one so I look forward to uh, the one for next week and thank you for watching. Thanks Billy.